Week 13 waiver wire coming at you hot, heavy. Actually, it's a snooze fest. Objectively, this might be the worst waiver wire I've seen in the history of uh, waiver wires. And I've been doing this a long time. I've been making content for a long time. This is the first week I've ever sat at my desk and said, hmm, is it even worth making this video? Will anybody get value from this video? That's where we're at. But we're going to do the damn thing because we always show up and we do the damn thing. And when we show up and do the damn thing, we get tucked. We flex the traps. We fucking dial in. As always, the game plan here, we jump into the sleeper trending tab so we can talk about the players that are most relevant in everybody's fantasy leagues rather than me making some dumbass list. But they have the dumbass list made up for us already and topping that list is Pat Firemuth, no surprise here. So he comes back from IR last week. He has a terrible game. He's he's simply a cone out there. But then Matt Canada gets fired. And in Matt Canada's first game, or in the Steelers' first game without Matt Canada, they, you've heard the numbers at this point already. First game over 400 offensive yards in like four seasons, all that kind of shit. Uh, Kenny Pickett is now throwing the ball over the middle. They're now using play action. And because of that, Pat Firemuth just popped off for nine catches and 120 yards and pat firemuth like listen we've got the four games in the beginning of the year where he didn't do anything three two seven yards uh seven yards so he has he has four out of six games this year in which he has fewer than 10 yards but you'd like to think that this offense is now going to run a little bit differently run a little bit more smoothly and pat firemuth has been one of kenny pickett's favorite targets right he led the team in touchdowns last year and i don't think that's fluky Right. I, I do think he is probably the preferred target of Kenny Pickett, who likes to settle the ball, uh, make easy throws over the middle rather than chucking it downfield to George Pickens, etc. So Pat Firemuth is the top pickup this week for the most part, especially if you need a tight end. Uh, and assuming Isaiah likely is already off the waiver because he was basically last week's Pat Firemuth and Mark Andrews going down. So, Pat, if you need a tight end, yeah, I'd, I'd put somewhere in like the 10 to 15 percent range. There's going to be bad games. There will be plenty of, I'm sure, like three for 30 games out of him. But, you know, if this offense continues to get better and better, which, again, like well-coached teams continue to just progress usually as the season goes on, and this almost always happens with Mike Tomlin's team, whether it's the defense or the offense, but you could definitely see their offense clicking a little bit more at least. And now without Matt Canada, you've got, you know what, we've got hope. That's where I'll leave it. We've got hope for the Pittsburgh offense, and we've got hope for Pat Firemuth. The rest of this waiver wire is just gross. I will I will take a little pit stop here at, at Greg Dorchville. Now, Greg Dorch has been playing because uh, Zach Pascal's out and Mike Wilson is out. And Kyler Murray's obviously, you know, playing pretty well right now. Zach Pascal came back last week, didn't play or didn't play much. Greg Dorch continued to play over him. And in two wide receiver sets, it was Greg Dorch and Hollywood Brown. So as you can see here on the right side, or I guess the left side, 75% of the snaps last week, 76% of the snaps this week. He is someone who, anytime he's on the field, the dude just produces. Coaches hate to put him on the field. Coaches hate him. Doctors hate him. They can't figure out what to do with Greg Dortch. But the fact of the matter is, he has 17 targets over the last two weeks. The fact of the matter is, Michael Wilson suffered some sort of setback on the injury that he's dealing with right now. So, Dortch seems to be the guy over Rondell Moore in terms of routes, in terms of targets, and in terms of playing on two wide receiver sets. So I think you could do much worse in PPR leagues than sneaky, sneaky Greg Dortch. Going down the list, Samaji P. Ryan's a fraud. Uh, Gerald Everett, fraud. Jordan Love's a pretty good streamer. He's been red hot right now. Dearness Johnson, I would say if I'm a Travis Etienne owner and you've got a spot to use or you've been holding it for some like shitty wide receiver, I think you could pick up Dearness Johnson. He seems to have like leapfrog Tank Bigsby and is earning a bigger role in the passing game, so he's all right. Hey, Dotton's a decent streamer at tight end. Curtis Samuel, coming off a big game uh, against Dallas, obviously, Nine catches, 100 yards on Thanksgiving. Again, they were down like 40 fucking points, so I think a lot of it came in garbage time. But they do play Miami this upcoming week. And Miami's actually low-key been a very, very tough uh, team to run against. And they're a tough team to – they've actually just been a very, very – uh, stout defense over the second half of the year, at least. And I think uh, a lot of the production that comes from wide receivers comes over the middle. And Miami is going to be projected to put up 30 points against this atrocious Washington defense, which on the flip side can mean a lot of passing production or a lot of pass attempts, at least from Sam Howell. And it seems like Curtis Samuel can kind of pop on any given day. So Curtis, Greg Dortch, these are, you know, PPR scam guys that can do some damage in your lineup. Jaden Reed's highly owned, obviously. A lot of these guys are already highly owned. Tyler Higby, 
two touchdowns on Sunday. Uh, those were his first two touchdowns of the entire season. So let's we're not going to pretend to bank on that. Gardner Minshew is low key a nice little uh, streamer this week at quarterback. I think he's played a lot of really tough matchups up to this point, but Tennessee is not one of them. Rashi Rice is the goat. Dallas Goddard is supposed to return. One guy that we're probably not going to see on this list that I do actually want to highlight is Josh Palmer. Okay, so Quentin Johnson was benched on Sunday. He was benched in the game. He wasn't hurt, but this coaching staff basically just said Johnson. You're shit, brother. Sit on the bench. Josh Palmer is eligible to return this upcoming week. I don't know if he's going to. The injury will dictate whether or not he's actually going to come back from the IR, but I do know the Chargers need him badly. And if he is healthy, he's going to be slotted right back into that wide receiver two role and one that's relatively fucking fruitful on the outside there for the Chargers. And we've seen Josh Palmer do a lot of good. So if Josh Palmer is sitting there on your waiver wire and you can pick him up and throw him in your IR slot, 1000% do that as soon as you watch this video. Tucker Craft's a cool little streamer, I guess, because Luke Musgrave is on the IR. There's a lot of, like, all right, little pickups we can make at tight end this week. Juwan Johnson's one of those that I like. He's running a lot of routes. He was fourth in route participation this week amongst all tight ends in the NFL, and that includes him leaving the game for a second. He's going to be fine. He's going to be playing, and I think that's one of the biggest points is they play against Detroit, so they're going to have to score a lot of points, and Detroit passing defense is not great. They're likely going to be without Chris Olave because of the concussion. They're already without Michael Thomas. He's on IR. And then Rashid Shahid, who's dealing with a strained quad, uh, is probably going to be out as well. So we're talking about their three top pass catchers out in a game where they're going to need to throw the ball. I think Jawan Johnson gets uh, pretty heavily involved there. He's a really, really nice tight end streamer. Jalen Hyatt's coming off of one of his best games, or probably his best game as a pro. He goes over 100 yards. Problem is, they got a bye this week, and then it's still Tommy DeVito. They play against Green Bay. They play they play at New Orleans. Maybe Marshawn Lattimore's back by then. They play at Philadelphia and the Rams. So it's really not that you know not that devious of a passing schedule. So there could be some big games from Jalen Hyatt. I just really have a hard time buying into um, Tommy DeVito leading this passing offense statistically and this being like anything consistent. Because you're talking about like at Washington the week before. He plays just seven percent fewer snaps, but he goes one for seven instead of five for one hundred nine. So there are going to be like weeks where. I mean, he's not going to lose you your league because he's not the guy that you're depending on to, but you're going to get a fucking 1.5 spot in your flex spot. So I get it. If you got room, you got some luxury sitting there. He's not a bad pickup. Roshan Johnson randomly fucking played. The The snap count is not here, but I was just looking it up before the video. On Monday Night Football last night, this dude played 75% of the snaps. Khalil Herbert started, but then it was basically Roshan Johnson like the rest of the game. As you could see, 5 for 40 in the passing game. He was playing on long down and distance. He was playing all over the field in most situations. Got 10 carries. Cool Herbert outcarried him. But 10 carries and 5 targets is big time. Obviously, Deonta Foreman was ruled out. He is not on the IR. Um, but they do have a bye in Week 13. And then they're coming back in Week 14. Detroit's a tough run defense. They get Cleveland. Uh, not exactly an easy defense. Arizona's a great matchup for running backs. And then Atlanta's a great run defense. So it's like tough matchups. We still have the bye. Deonta Foreman likely going to be back at some point during the rest of this schedule. So it, it's tough to really pinpoint what we want to do with Roshan Johnson. But that number of snaps is uh, something that we cannot ignore. So for the 75th time this, this year, Roshan Johnson is back on our waiver wire list. And realistically, dude, this is one of those guys where like maybe end of the year, they just kind of want to see what they got here. They want to see what they have with their their players that are young and start to look towards next year and start to look towards the offseason and that kind of thing. So maybe Roshan takes on a bigger role. Maybe that wasn't fluky. Feels like it probably is, but he's someone that I would, I would, he's probably my top running back pickup of the week if he's available in your league, maybe 10%-ish. Uh, other than that, everybody stinks, man. Yep. Everybody else is really just like handcuffs or hopeful fucking prayers up in the air kind of thing. So we got the drop list. Ty Chandler leads the drop list. He was outplayed out everything by Alexander Madison. This was one of the like my key points talking about Ty Chandler in the waiver wire video a couple weeks ago. There's a reason backups are backups and there's a reason third stringers are third stringers. And there's a reason teams who trade for other running backs to play ahead of you are trading for other running backs to play ahead of you. So Ty Chandler's cool. He's exciting. But let's not lie here. Alexander Madison looked 100 times better than he did last night. And I don't think we're ever going to get a real conclusion of who's going to be the 1A, who's going to be the 1B. It's Madison right now. It's Chandler behind him. Maybe that switches next week and then people are excited about it again. But there's no clear-cut answer unless one of these guys gets seriously injured right now. So Chandler's uh, – I'd hold on to him in case something happens to Madison. But, like, I also think if you don't need him, then – it's okay for you to get rid of him. Henderson, definitely droppable. Definitely would not drop Isaiah Likely, despite him being on a bye. 
Johnu Smith at this point, mm, he's not doing much. Quentin Johnson is droppable. Deonta Foreman, I think, is droppable. Rashid Shaheed, I would wait for injury news before dropping him. So I wouldn't pull that yet. Odell, I would hold on to as well, given he's kind of like one of their leading target earners right now with Mark Andrews out. Kareem Hunt, I wouldn't drop either. Noah Brown, I wouldn't drop either. That offense is just lighting up defenses. I don't know what his injury status is. So like, if you need someone in place of him, because we have a big bye week coming up. I, sh I should have mentioned this at the top of the video, but we have six teams on bye coming up. We have Chicago. We have Minnesota. We have Buffalo. We have Las Vegas. We have Baltimore. I don't know if I said Minnesota. I don't remember, but there's another team if it wasn't Minnesota. So this might be a week where you're not, you don't really have the luxury of holding on to dudes that you wanted to up until this point. Because right now we're in week fucking 13. You need to win. We need to win games. We're not playing around anymore. So, I mean, you could drop Noah Brown if you needed it. You could uh, probably wouldn't drop Kula Herbert because he's really the starter. But again, if you need the spot, I'm okay with it. Tyler Boyd, same thing. Tajay Spears, I'd love to hold on to him too. Jalen Guyton droppable. I'd hold on to Justin Watson, actually. He's still running. He's a starter with Rashi Rice and two wide receiver sets, despite his terrible game. Uh, Khalil Shakir, I would hold on to. I'm a little bit nervous about what happens with Dawson Knox. When he comes back, he's likely coming back after the bye. We'll see what happens because the splits are obviously a huge difference maker in this offense between Dalton Kincaid, Dawson Knox, Khalil Shakir when Dawson Knox is off the field. Um, so that could be something, but Khalil Shakir has been playing well, so I, I would not drop him yet. All right, we kept it quick. We kept it tight. We kept it concise. The week 13 waiver wire video in the novels. If you want our rankings, if you want our fab suggestions, if you want to become a big dog member, head over to bdge.co. It's all sitting there, double cheeked up for you. Easy to sign up, easy to win your league, easy peasy. I'll see you on Wendeezy. I'm sorry. Thank <laughs> you.